Welcome, 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 everybody, to another episode of Monsters of the Gridiron, where we're going to be giving you some great content about our beloved Chicago Bears tonight. Tonight, we got, as always, Sam O. Show, show the people some love, Sam O. Shout out to everybody in the chat. Welcome back to MODG Podcast. We got a good show for you guys tonight. Some really good guests. Uh, I'll let them introduce themselves. Carol Thompson, introduce yourself to, to everybody in the chat. Absolutely. What's going on, everybody? My name is Kyrie Thompson. Uh, I'm from Northwest Indiana. Went to school in Chicago. Been around Chicago land forever. Right now, I'm out in Boston uh, doing some public radio producing. I was a Patriots beat reporter um, for what, two years before joining this job. You know, so I've been writing about sports out here. But you know, as always, bear down, man. It never leaves you. Yes, Payne, one of the top <laughs> ACC commentators. Hey, tell the chat. Who you are and how you became a Bears fan, Terry. Uh, what's going on, good people? My name is Terry Spain. Uh, I live here in sunny Florida, but I'm originally from the great state of South Carolina, Conway, South Carolina, to be exact. But uh, I've been a Bears fan since the 80s. They won the they won the uh the Super Bowl on my birthday, and ever since then it's been, you know, lights out, you know. And a lot of people know if you're a Bears fan, you know the fridge. Is from South Carolina, so yes. you know he definitely had a heavy influence on a lot of people in South Carolina voting and rooting for the Bears. So I'm excited about being here. Thanks for the invitation, and hey, hopefully this won't be the last time I'm on your podcast, man. Hey, 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 Terry, that depends on you. If you if you bring the energy and <laughs> bring what, 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 what the chat, what, what everybody want to see, you might get a, another invite. But hey, we'll talk. we we'll talk to me. I'll talk back now. <laughs> well, that's what, yeah, that's hey, right. Will, so Will been trying to get me on this podcast since we were at the Shrine Bowl together. And now that he finally has, I'm trying not to make you regret it. You know what I mean? <laughs> hey, that's what I'm talking about. Bring the fireworks, Terry. It's <laughs> Bring it. We in the off season right now, so we there's are. a lot been going on. You know, but mm -hmm. I want to talk about the stadium update, the owners meeting, the RG3 comments, the Hall of Fame game. Of course, Caleb Williams, he's the number one choice right now, but we got to talk about number nine. Those are the topics we're going to talk about tonight. So let's start off with the with the stadium update. Samo, tell me from what you just heard today in reference potentially where the stadium might be. And, and, and of course, we all got our input on the whole stadium situation. Like, mm -hmm. realistically, tell us what you think this means based off what we heard today. Well, what it really means, based on what we heard today, is that uh, the Bears have regained leverage in negotiations with Arlington Heights. That's the first thing it means. But I, <laughs> but I do think that, you know, the Bears are seriously considering keeping the Chicago Bears in the city of Chicago and on the lakefront, man. And I don't think that's a bad idea, personally. I know that uh, it's attractive to have your own stadium and own complex built around the stadium but if you're from chicago you know that the proximity from chicago to arlington heights is pretty far and there's like a one road in and one road out so you know just because you build it doesn't mean they will come that's how i feel about it like you know the city of chicago is extremely attractive uh year round you know so there, that means this stadium is going to be in use year round like we said final four super bowl and all that other good stuff, plus all the concerts and all those other good things. And just because, you know, they build this stadium out in Arlington Heights, you know, during the off season, they're going to have casinos and hotels that probably won't be used, if you ask me. Because yeah. uh, we have gambling on the south side of Chicago, north side of Chicago, east and west side, you know. So th that's not going to attract, I think, people from the city to go out to Arlington Heights for a long periods of time outside of uh, going to see our beloved Bears. That's just my thoughts personally, and I'm starting to feel like maybe Kevin Warren has talked the Bears into the same feelings, man, as far as keeping everything in Chicago where the infrastructure is already there. You know, you got the your, your, the core of your Bear fans are in the city of Chicago. So that's just my thoughts on it. What are you thinking, Terry? Yeah, I mean, hey, I echo the same sentiments as you, my brother, but we, one of the things that, that's unique, I've been around sports, I'm quite sure, like you all have been for quite some time, and then uh, having an opportunity to be in the sports commentating world, I, I looked at it in a, in a couple of different ways. One of the things, you're right, uh, so Chicago Bears does have the leverage, and one of the things that Chicago has always wanted to do is host the Super Bowl. 
Uh, you remember that last mm-hmm. time we had that tragedy in New York when they tried to have that Super Bowl in New York Ooh. and it was freezing? Chicago is not going to have that. So I think there is going to be a dome. They have no mm-hmm. choice because yeah. all the stuff that they can bring. Um, and, and you can believe that all presidents go around to different stadiums and um, and they, and they kind of mimic or look at other teams and what they're doing. And one of the things that the Chicago Bears have done is they uh, they've already talked to the, the people who designed the, uh, the the SoFi Stadium. Mm-hmm. So they're looking at, you know, possibly getting that dome so they can attract the final four, like you mentioned, the Super Bowl and things of that nature. But one of the things that I want you all to remember is this: Chicago is big enough for two teams. So Arlington Heights may be another suspension team that, you know, Chicago, I mean, you know, the the NFL is looking to expand pretty soon. So Mm -hmm. I wouldn't be surprised if that money or that stadium that they're projecting to build not be for the Chicago Bears, but for another team to be named, you know, in a future reference for um, for another team in Chicago. It's big enough to hold two two, two teams. You got Mm -hmm. uh, you have New York has two teams, you know, Chicago can have two teams. So. That may be one of those, you know, uh, those dangling fruits that they have already because they already have all the they already have the land. And one of the things that came that came up that uh, uh, Mr. Warren said was land is, is you know, he, he pretty much said land is key. Mm-hmm. He said that in one of his quotes. So when he said that, I, let, I that just put my antennas up uh, two things. Either they're going to sell that land to an expansion team for uh, Chicago or they may move the training camp out there to Chicago uh, from from Barbonet to to uh, oh, to uh yeah so that would be nice options, options, I like that boy you threw a twist in that Tara I, like that. Talk, I told you to talk to me I like both of those ideas you leaning in talk to me <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I think you know and that that's something I've been kind of kicking around in my head is that having that land available I mean, obviously, you know, Hallis Hall, you know, kind of being where it is and, and you know, all, all of that, like that's it, it make it makes sense, obviously, to have the facilities there and, and such. But if you if you can make I mean, for example, right, you know, you go down to Frisco, Texas, right, and the Dallas Cowboys have their state of the art, you know, just mm-hmm. practice facility down there. I mean, like exactly. that that could hold a whole college. I mean, it'll hold the Shrine Bowl. You know, you have a whole college football game in there, stuff like that. That's their practice facility. You yeah. could do that at Arlington Heights if you wanted to do it, if you, that wasn't going to be the site that you wanted to build your stadium on. And, I mean, you could still, you know, make a decent amount of money, right, having people come out there for, for training camp and, and all of that if, if that's what you wanted to do. Um, I think it's going to be interesting, and, and I'm not super well-versed in this, but the main thing I've been wondering about is if – it's a publicly owned stadium, right? And the bears don't own the, you know, own the rights to the stadium and they're not getting like, you know, the lion's share of the revenue from it. I I would have to see like what that agreement would be like, but Mm -hmm. like having that private land, like for example, right? Like I'm, you know, out here in Boston, um, Mm. you know, the, the Patriots stadium isn't in Boston, right? You know, it's, it's down in Foxborough. Right. And so they 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 own that land. They own that. Stadium. They built a whole mall and complex. They got they got a movie theater over there. They got restaurants. They got Trader Joe's. They got everything mm-hmm. over there in this little <laughs> complex. Like it is, it's its own little city, right? Patriot mm-hmm. place. And so all that money, all of that money flows through the craft's hands. You know what I mean? And so it's it's not even just a like, and that's how you. You know, having that private money, that, you know, liquid cash, that's how you pay out the big contracts, right? That's how you have the money on hand to dish mm-hmm. out that big money that, say, Caleb Williams is as good as every, everybody thinks he's going to be. Mm-hmm. And he's going to want a lot of guaranteed money on that contract when it's time to do that. Yeah. And the Bears are not a finance, like an independently wealthy organization. You know, the McCaskies are not like super independently rich. And so what happens if you don't have that liquid cash, that, that you know, that liquid cash flow? How does that affect the game plan? At the same time, how could you argue against, you know, having having, a, you know, potentially a Super Bowl, having big events down at the lakefront? Right. Mm-hmm. It's iconic. I mean, iconic. who who, do, who doesn't want that? You know, and and uh, again, the ability to have that right there, 
um, you know, accessible to everybody driving the T, what you're uh, call it the T, uh, you know, but like, like the L and all that stuff. I'm out here in Boston too long. Terminology. <laughs> ah, God. Um, but like to be able to, to use public transit to get there, okay. like it'd be a hell of a situation. Like I, 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 I love it just from a leverage play, but if they actually end up doing it, the only downside, right. Is that, you bought the land for Arlington Heights, and then Kevin Warren comes in here like, uh, okay, hold on. Like, let me go ahead and take the wheel here. And then you might have to, you know, kind of go back on that investment, which is like so many things that happened with the Chicago Bears. The timing wasn't thought out particularly well. And then you mm -hmm. go ahead and you change faces and change people, and then they come in with different ideas. But I think Kevin Warren is playing this really nicely. Yeah. Well, he's definitely Absolutely. playing it nicely. And, and the caveat on what you said, KT, you know, the thing I like about having a dome privately owned stadium versus continuing to stay down in Soldier Field, which again, it's iconic, but versus, you know, a majority of proceeds going to the city versus now, like you say, right now, it's March Madness. That's mm -hmm. that, that, that would be 100% to the Bears. Then you're talking about high school state championships. That, those will be played in there. You know, some of the, co like, like, the concert, like down here. Super Bowl. Yeah, the, Super Bowls, yeah, mean, all of that. Stuff. Super Bowl, I'm talking I mean, I mean the dome part, the dome part's not negotiable. It's right. got it's gotta absolutely be. it's right. gotta absolutely. happen. Yeah. It, it, well, it's gonna happen, but at the end of the day, yeah. think about like y'all said ATT, Mike Tyson and um what's the kid name about the fight? That's yeah, yeah. Like, that, that's going one hundred percent to who? Jerry. So mm -hmm. so I'm looking at the concept from an executive perspective or how it will increase the valuation of the franchise because a lot of these other owners, they have ancillary uh, things like Jerry oil and gas. They got other things that generate revenue. Whereas McCaskey, a hundred percent of the revenue from my understanding comes from the bears. Yeah. That's so, the so revenue so side though. So. Will, but what about the, uh, the operational costs though? Then that means they also don't have to pay those operational costs, right? Well, that, and, and that's the thing as well. Yeah. So, so we, the leverage, but right now, the leverage. Right, it, the leverage right now, Chicago has because I can't see all the high saying, hold up, a billion dollars worth of revenue coming into this city. Jobs, hotels, mm -hmm. restaurants, you know what I'm saying? Like, to me, it's a power play. Now, if yeah. secondarily it stays in, in Chicago, I'm, I'm not going to trip about that either because I just mm -hmm. don't like the long ass walk. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> well, hey, what well, they said, uh, they said that they were supposed to build a uh, like a covered bridge or something that goes along yeah. with it. We'll yeah, get yeah. you, a, we'll, we'll get you a moped or something. And we'll get you one of them little, no, 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 little no, wheelchairs I got from the grocery yeah. store. Yeah, no, <laughs> no, you got to give us those segues, you know, because you, yeah. you know yeah. how to do the segue. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, that would be the rule. Buses last, I'm like, man, like that was the transportation. So it's like when you're looking at tailgating, and I, and I know a lot of people tailgate up at the uh, Walden Deck. Like that's where we normally go when I when I do come out there and, and tailgate. But I think that the leverage is is, is the Bears. I think Warren he's playing this to a T, and, yep. and, and and we just gonna see what all to hype. What's the next play? I like mean, the very it, next day, right? It was like the mm -hmm. next day or the day after. It's like, yeah. oh yeah, Harlington. Arlington Heights is willing to renegotiate that. Yes. Yeah. It's like, yeah. uh -huh, I'm sure I they were. I'm sure they were. Yeah, <laughs> right. It's, it's chess, guys. It's not checkers. So, uh, it's like I said, there's a lot going on as we transition to the next topic. The owners meeting. Uh, we've been we've been monitoring everything down in, in Florida. Looking at flu, yeah. we got a fresh cut. Uh, polls. I, I seen polls on the Pat McAfee show. You know, he's been doing a, a plethora of interviews. So. Mm -hmm. K, KT, I'm gonna start with you this time. So, so based off the interviews and and, and the questions that you've seen, uh, Chef Pose being asked, how do you feel that the direction of where we're going right now with a new quarterback, which again, let's say it's gonna be Caleb that's going to be in play, what do you see with the infrastructure supporting cast in play? What do you see us going moving forward? Well, you talked about leverage. And that, that's an interesting thing because I feel like that is so much of what Ryan Poles has been playing and maintaining this entire time. Yep. And I'll, I'll get maybe get into that a little bit later, but I, I think just in a general sense, I wrote about this today, actually. 
for so long in Chicago, everything has felt kind of mismanaged, right? Especially at the quarterback position. And I even think back to, the, I mean, the most recent quarterback, right? Or rather the, the most recent quarterback draft, like before uh, Justin Fields, I should say. So two quarterbacks ago, where's Mitchell Trubisky, where it's like, okay, he was the, the consensus, uh, you know, in, in a lot of circles, uh, number one quarterback, but they didn't even really do their homework on Deshaun Watson and Patrick Mahomes. And that that's criminal, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Because you might've seen something that you liked and that might have swayed you to do something different. Mm -hmm. um, but instead you decided to go ahead and just be like, nope, I fell in love with this one guy and that's it. Ryan Poles is not doing that, right? I think about the fact that if the Bears really wanted to, they could just say right now, you know, we're drafting Caleb Williams. Like, that's it. We're sold. We're going to go ahead and do it. And, and that's it. And it wouldn't matter. No team can jump them. They could do whatever they want. And I mean, maybe you could say, oh, well, you know, that that means something for the, the number nine pick. And, you know, we could play hardball with them if they want to trade down, whatever. But it, not like not like it matters. Right. They could they could tell everybody right now that they're taking Caleb Williams and it wouldn't matter. OK, but the Bears and Ryan Poles are going to continue doing their due diligence. They're going to go and check out Jaden Daniels and Drake May. And J.J. McCarthy, they are going to sit down and watch every last one of them, sit down and interview every last one of them and make sure they have every piece of information they need to make this decision because they know how big it is. And before doing that, they went ahead and put that rookie quarterback in the best possible position you could have. I mean, I already thought it was going to be nice having D.J. Moore having an offensive line that, you know, at least has some gelling together. And then maybe you, you add a starting center, right? Cause that's still something that we all want to see. And that maybe, Oh, you go ahead and throw Roma Dunze in the mix as your wide receiver too. And then you go ahead and like, you know what, this fourth round pick ain't that big a deal. Let's go ahead and trade it for Keenan Allen. <laughs> right. That's wild. And, and, and again, the, the, the opportunistic nature that that polls showed in going out and making that trade and just knowing that look what whatever it's always going to be difficult for a rookie quarterback adjusting to the speed of the game and all that not everybody is going to be cj stroud i think that everybody's kind of looking at it like oh yeah if they just come in and light it up like cj stroud did these guys are exceptions to the rule not every rookie quarterback does this and so what do I do to bring my rookie quarterback on as, as best I can? I go out and I build around them before they even get here. And from that standpoint, I just feel like we haven't seen that kind of thing in Chicago for such a long time. It's always been teardowns or old bad rosters that these yep. young kids are coming into. And Ryan Poles is just like, look, man, this decision is too important. I got it. I want to get them to a point where they can develop that much more quickly we don't have to be worrying about these things. So we don't have to be going into year two or three and being like, did this guy get a fair evaluation? We're going to be able to evaluate them pretty quick, the way that Ryan Poles has set this up. He's done this so well. And I think that ultimately all this is made for what did Ryan Poles say that he wanted to do right at the beginning, his first press conference, take the North and never give it back. And I think he's put them in a position to where, look, we still got to see how it all plays out on the field, but mm -hmm. on paper, he's put them in a, in a position to do that. Terry, what you think? Talk to me. Where we're we currently going right now, direction-wise. Well, I'll tell you what, you know, so the, all the owners and everyone, they're down here in Orlando, and I have to admit, um, this is the first time that I can say that the Bears are not really rebuilding. We're actually just renovating. And, and so... Any quarterback that comes into this situation uh, is going to is set up to, to succeed. Now, uh, as as KT mentioned before, I think the draft when we had Pat Mahomes and everyone that set Chicago back years because we, you had the opportunity. Even if you just went ahead and drafted Deshaun Watson, I think we'd, that'll still put the Bears probably in a better predicament. But we can't we can't hinder on that. Chicago was not going to get fooled twice again. You know that fooled me one shame on you. They're, they're going with Caleb. Mm -hmm. I like the way that Ryan Poles, who was a former player himself, 
is handling this like he already know who the top candidate is that he has as his job. But he still got three other candidates that he need to look at in the event that something happens to the number one draft pick. So I like how he's taking it and he's had he's handling it with class. And to be honest with you, I honestly believe that and I, I must admit, I was a little uh, a little disappointed when we got rid of uh, Justin Fields. However, I think um, I think Caleb Williams is going to have a hell of a season. And it's because of the people that KT mentioned. And then you didn't even mention that we 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 signed Swift. That's a yep. that, that's a running that's yep. a quarterback's dreams. So you already got Khalil Herbert, and then you already got my man Roshan. <laughs> but now you have Swift as well, who can who's an all do it type of back. Mm-hmm. I mean, like the Bears, quite honestly, I, I I think they set themselves up for success. And I and Ryan Poles meant what he said when he said that we're going to take the North and we're never going to give it back. And those deals, those signings that we've gotten or we've done has set the Bears up for the next five to seven years. And quite honestly, we could thank um, the Carolina Panthers for this sucking this year because that first pick, yep. and then you have the ninth pick, which we're going to, I know we're going to talk a little bit more about what we're going to do with that ninth pick, but man, come on, you can't get any better than this. This is a great time to be a Bears fan. Now, look, this is going to be the last, last, last two weeks. We're gonna have every jump on this bandwagon. We have everybody sign the paperwork after this when the season starts. When 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 the Hall of Fame game kicks off, if you have not put your request in to be a Bears fan, it's denied to further notice. Absolutely. It's gonna be closed as soon, man. <laughs> everything y'all said, man. I agree with everything you brothers just said, man. Uh I was just looking back earlier today, just thinking back, well. As to where, where we were and where we are, man, like you said, where we were in that pace era, man, where we were trading first round draft picks and uh, giving away these high contracts with all this money on the back end that we just got done paying for. And, you know, just putting ourselves in bad position after bad position. We, the brand pace didn't do us due diligence on all of the quarterbacks. You fell in love with an old raggedy ass Camry and uh, <laughs> and, and chose his quarterback based off of that. So, hey, Ryan, Ryan Poles has masterfully uh, built this roster out in just two years, man. Starting from, you know, tearing everything down like he should have, like it was absolutely necessary. I know we were all thinking like, man, what is this man doing? Like, he getting rid of all these good players? But they were all past their prime. They all left. And I think Khalil Mack is probably the only one who's had a lot of success since he's left. And, and Roshan. And Roshan, and Roshan, oh, yeah, yeah Roshan. I mean, that that was Poles got rid of Roshan though. Poles got rid of Roshan, and he did get something for him. He got a, a draft pick for him. We yeah. didn't just allow him to walk away. And then Roshan wanted to leave too, so he 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 kind of talked his way out of Chicago. But just the trade, the initial trade, man, that we did from going from one to nine, and doing that with a team that gave us a number one wide receiver. We haven't had a number one wide receiver in. Since Brandon Marshall, probably. I can't think of Jeffrey. (laughs) And Alshon Jeffrey, right? So we get our number one wide receiver. He comes right in, balls out 1,300 yards, his best best season of his career with a really pretty good quarterback. Then, uh, hey, the very next year, we got the number one pick again. You know, after having a seven win season, should have been 10, but I'm not going to talk about that right now. (laughs) Uh, And placing ourselves in perfect position for a quarterback to come into this situation and hit the ground running with a Keenan McCarthy, Keenan Allen. I keep saying Keenan McCarthy. I don't know why I keep saying that, but a Keenan Allen, man, he was, good too. he was good too. That was one of my guys, boy. Uh, but Keenan Allen, man, is one of the most quarterback friendly receivers that you could ever ask for, man. This guy's always going to get open uh, on third down. He's going to be a third down monster. Then you still have DJ Moore, who just coming off the best season of his career. We're going to get another good weapon on the X wide receiver on the outside. We get the, we get uh, DeAndre Swift in the backfield. We get a second tight end and, uh, and Everett, Jerry, Everett, uh, Gerald Everett, man, another good Sneaky weapon, signing. man. That's a sneaky, sneaky, a sneaky good signing. That dude is going to be really good for us too. Another good dump it to this guy and allow him to go and rumble. Hey man, Ryan Poles is cooking, man. He is uh 
He is filling himself down there at the owners meeting. I don't know. The man just got a swag about him right now. I I, I know this like last year and the years before. Every time you heard him speak, it always seemed a little nervous to me, man. Like he was nervous, like he was coming into his own. This year, he's confident, laid back. He got the the t shirt on with the blazer now, man. He kicking it. He got flus growing out the beard, man. They look, they're looking extremely confident in what they're doing, man, and decisive. And man, I'm just looking forward to seeing it on the field, man. And finishing this offseason strong, man, with a strong draft because it's not done yet, but uh. And I'm happy with what I've seen so far, man. And I think, like you all said, we're going up. I think we definitely are ready to contend in the North. We already have Detroit's car. We're about to pull uh, Green Bay Packers' car this year, man, because we're due to be uh, whipping on those boys. And, uh, hey, this division is wide open for us to take. And I'm looking forward to Caleb Williams coming in and taking it over, man. He said he wanted to see the team that selected him was ready to win, and I'm glad that – uh, Ryan Poles has responded the way he did. Well, look, Ryan Poles is in control. That's the thing, mm -hmm. right? The mm -hmm. first couple of years, you know, the teardown was still happening. The building process was the, the foundation's there now. And yes. He knows it. And he knows right. that it's coming together. He saw Solid it coming foundation. together all throughout last year. And he know he, he had the right. That, that's the thing about Ryan Poles. He had the right plan. He knew they had to come in and gut this whole thing and, and tear it apart. He knew it was going to be rough in 2022. And he had the right idea about how to do it. And I think the fact that he's now seen, it's, it's like, you know, like a shooter, right? They put up a bunch of shots. He started, he saw him go in, right? He's seeing the fruits of his labor pay off. And mm -hmm. now that's why he's walking around down there. It's like, and you got me the number one overall pick yep. this year and, and yep. off a trade. You just yep. gave me that. It's yep. like, now, now it's yep. now it's a whole different deal. Now he's got right. a whole different shout deal. Out, shout out to Lovey Smith. Shout out to Lovey, man. We're gonna build a, <laughs> a Lovey statue in front of the new stadium this yeah. year after yeah. we win the Super Bowl, man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and another thing, man, that we didn't talk about is Caleb. He he put position. He put excuse me. He put Caleb in position not to come here and have to be Superman because our defense. It's so solid. He doesn't have to go out and score 40 points to win, man. The man can score literally three touchdowns in a game, and I, I feel like our defense is going to come out humming. Yeah. Uh, like, that, you that see, just you goes. the secretary's doing now, right? Exactly, man. The secondary is going to be humming. Then we're going to get a, a Kevin Byer who's going to even be better, make our secondary even better, getting those guys aligned in the backfield. And that deep secondary, and uh, man, and he's a ball hawk himself, man. I'm just so excited about this season. We get one more good pass rusher, and another good wide out, man. That's all we really need with a good quarterback, and man, and and yeah. pray for good health, and pray for good yeah. health for all yeah. of our guys, man. Man, look, it's funny how all three of y'all kind of like are similar in your thought process. Because the first thing he did from an executive perspective, he came in and got the balance sheet right. That's the first mm -hmm. thing. All the dead cap, the Danny Trevathians and the Tariq Coins that <laughs> have been gone two Nick years still getting paid based off with, with pay. See, people, all of that in itself, in its entirety, is keen as to what polls came in and did. And that's why I told mm -hmm. him, I saw him at the shrine. I said, look, you are a great architect from the financial perspective. Now, if you look mm -hmm. at the draft, we got, we got number one and nine. But look, number 40 that we traded to the commanders, technically number 40 as it stands right now, is Montez Sweat. Think about that, guy. Mm -hmm. We got number 75. Then we traded our fourth round pick to the LA Chargers for Kenny Allen. So mm -hmm. the, that fourth rounder, that because we, we had two fourth rounders. I was in the, in the Philadelphia Eagles. So we still mm -hmm. got the Eagles fourth round. Then we traded a fifth for Bates. So that fifth yep. essentially became Ryan Bates, who yep. is a, who technically can start at center if we can't somehow, and I'm not going to hold this out because think about it. I'm going to sit back and watch. We still got that 2025 20, second from Carolina. So it would not it would not surprise me if somehow that pick is packaged to come back up mm -hmm. in the second round of this year to grab, who say, a Keon Coleman or, or package up even further to come back up in the first, in the late first and grab a JPJ. Because when mm -hmm. I'm looking at number nine, guys, and as you all are saying, we still need an edge. Because like Eric mm -hmm. Washington said, he want a he want a NASCAR package to really? keep that pressure on the quarterback. Yeah. 
And based off what we heard Holes and Iberflu say, number nine, either somebody who can attack the quarterback or protect the quarterback. Now, when you say protect, that could be alignment or that could be a, another wide receiver. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's like, like listen, listen intently in the context yeah. in which the words are being spewed. So instead of just jumping the gun and, 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 and making up your own internal I agree. philosophy, a lot of times if you truly listen, you're being given the information so you can make a sound decision as to where they might go at number nine. Because now I'm seeing people saying Marvin Harrison might drop down. Another <laughs> oh, yeah. That, 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 uh, I, I don't see it, but I, I but nah. I, I have heard a lot of that as well. I, hey. I, I've heard that. And, Terry, come on now. From what we saw at the Senior Bowl, Terry, you know more than anybody on this panel. And David and KT, they saw a lot over at um, the Shrine Bowl. But, like, the creme de la creme was a lot of what we saw at the Senior Bowl. And it's so much premier talent. Oh my God. Oh, yeah. That we, that we can plug in not only as an impact player, but as Samo said earlier, as we pray for health, but also as premier depth. Because the one yeah. thing that killed us last year was no the day. interior offensive line depth. That's yeah. the one thing that killed us. And on the defense, mm -hmm. guess what? Not having someone other than Sweat that could constantly get pressure on the quarterback. Because right. mm -hmm. after studying Caleb, if Caleb's protected, we putting up 28, 35 points a game. And, 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 and I'm not even saying that lightly. Like, I've watched this young man. I became an instant fan because all y'all know, I was like, when I look at college, we've seen all these different college quarterbacks that were projected, not necessarily generational, but even good. Other than, let's be honest, C.J. Stroud in the last, let's say, 20 years, C.J. Stroud, Patrick Mahomes, and even Patrick Mahomes said the first year, Andrew Luck, how many have really came in and set the league on fire as it was projected? So well, nothing like Cam. Cam Look, did it too. Yeah, Cam, Cam mm -hmm. did it, but he did it in good. So, so when people say, you know, it was a Justin Fields camp versus Caleb camp, no, I like Caleb. But mm -hmm. I'm looking at Caleb versus Pac-12 defenses that at the end of the day, th th like they can't Including stop his own. own. <laughs> they right. can't stop a known league. So yeah. I'm looking at Justin – who's already in the league three years with limited resources. And guess what? He's keeping us in game that we shouldn't be in. Right. So now guess what? Justin's gone now. So the business is the business. I'm looking at now who gives us the best chance right now in current time and current space to go under center and give us the productivity to get us to that next level. And when I say next level, I'm talking about NFC North championship. I'm talking about NFC championship because Let's be honest. The NFC right now is weak. It's ice water. If you look at that schedule we got, we got a fourth place schedule, gentlemen. So at the yeah. end of the day, there's no reason. I said 12 wins last year. I'm going to go on the hill again and say 12 this year because I'm looking at the road and I'm looking at a way. And, we, and, we playing <laughs> in, and we're playing in London this year. Well, that's, yeah. what, that's what I'm saying. Like, we got so many opportunities right now. And, and guess what, guys? We're not finished because – I want to see if Keenan does an extension, which is going to free up some cap space. I also mm -hmm. want to see what we do with the remaining monies in the term of, like, I know money going to be set aside for the draft class, but we still got a few more holes that we need to attack. Oh, yeah. Hey, come yeah. on, baby. You, you Give me some insight. I can see you over there itching right now. Let me <laughs> My so boy. so enamored by the by I was like, let me just go ahead and just finish my dinner and then join that after a long time. <laughs> so, I was like, so I, I was like, let's see my man Kari's on here. KT, what's going on, man? It's good to see you. Absolutely I know Kari and I, you know, uh, during the free agency, man, we, we were blowing up each other's phones, man, on like what was going on. It was like and uh, a lot of a uh, lot of insight from the East Coast. So it's good to see you again, Samo. Terry Spain, up, nice, to, nice to meet you. See you. How you Ooh, doing? Nice, nice I mean, I I said I said a couple of weeks ago when we were on the on the on the podcast that I feel we have at least one more whoa move. Like mm -hmm. something's gonna like so I, I I and part of me is thinking you know we might use you know draft capital or possibly a player uh, or both to make. A splash in some kind of way, maybe possibly edge, or or maybe an or or maybe another uh, piece of the offensive line. 
I'm not sure. There's been a lot of interesting ideas and, and thoughts uh, put out on the internet. I've been, uh, you know, I know we were talking about uh, the running back stable. Honestly, I think, I think uh, Khalil Herbert is trade bait. I think he could be, I, I think he could be shipped out. I think, I, I think so. there's a lot of teams yeah. out there that would offer us, hear me out, like give us like a fourth or, or fifth for him. I mm -hmm. think he's worth, I, I think he, I think he's worth it. So Dallas. And he's on a cheap Dallas. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Dallas. I, I, Dallas is one of the spots, you know, here in big D they could use him and he would excel. Mm -hmm. So I still think that there's one more kind of like wow move where I'd be, you know, I'd, I'd text Will and, 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 and KT and Swift in the middle of the night saying, yo, <laughs> <laughs> you see this? I, th I think something's yeah. coming. Um, I, I, there's a lot of questions. I don't know how I feel about going into the going into the season with Caleb and Badgent and and Rippin. That Angry. quarterback room kind of makes me yeah kind of makes me yeah. uneasy. You know what I mean? So, yeah, I, 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 so I, I, I think I think we're probably going. We're looking at drafting. Uh, what what's the uh, boy that used to play for the Titans? Um, oh, right. Titans. Yeah. Tannehill. I, I think we may say sign, sign Tannehill to a yeah. one or two year deal because we you need that, David. You're right, mm -hmm. man. Bajan and uh, um, I don't even know the other guy's name. Quite Rick. honestly, that, Rick, yeah, Rick, yeah. Rick, yeah, it is. It, it definitely is. But um, yeah, you you can't be confident with, with those two. No, no. Well, yeah, and I mean Rippin. Rippin's basically there to kind of teach the offense, but he's probably going to be like your Nathan Peterman. He's probably not even going to be active mm -hmm. on game day, no, I, yeah. I would think. So yeah. he doesn't even necessarily factor into the equation that way. I feel like, and 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 here and here's the thing that I had questions about this quarterback room last year as well. Um, the fact that you know Nathan Peterman was kind of your only veteran. It's not like Nathan Peterman has really had been in the league that long either, right? Right, he came, he, came, he came into the room. He, he came in with Trubisky. He hasn't really mm -hmm. played, you know, that that much and, and all that. I think it would be nice to have a, a really experienced veteran, a guy who has played a lot, um, you know, or a guy who's who's at least been in the league for like I don't know, like eight years, or, you know, eight plus mm -hmm. years or something like that. Like I think Josh Johnson's already someplace else but like somebody like that you know what mm -hmm. i mean to, to come in and and really sit with a guy you know really sit with caleb williams and just be like okay look this is how i go about you know watching film you know this is what i'm looking for here you know okay i've seen this before in the past like yes. I, I feel like i feel like somebody like you know like brett riffin doesn't really give you that you know what no, I mean? So I, no, I would no. like to see more experience at the backup quarterback position. Well, you, you see with the Cleveland Browns, they got like four good – four quarterbacks, don't they? <laughs> yeah. I was like, goodness gracious. Yeah. Like, yeah. They, they've gotten four quarterbacks. So, obviously, all four quarterbacks are not going to stay. But I think I think the best bet for Chicago is to get somebody like Tannehill. You might have to overpay for him slightly because he knows he's not coming in to be the man. But mm -hmm. but in all actuality, he, he can do wonders for Caleb. Yeah, I don't right. think I don't think we're gonna have to overpay him because right now there's really no market for him to be honest. Because everybody got QB one. If you look at everybody roster right now, with the exception of the guys who we know are taking a quarterback in the draft, they have their QB one and QB two slotted. So yeah. essentially, he's waiting for someone to get injured or in this case, mm -hmm. be a, a bridge for us or, 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 or a camp casualty. So mm -hmm. yeah, like it, I, I can see. Tannehill, one year, three million, which again, that's that, that's peanuts in the grand scheme of things. As right. we because we got some cuts ourselves, because I, I don't see and, and I hope I'm misspeaking on this, but based off of Shane Walter's offense, I don't see any fullbacks in his offense. I don't I, I like I and Homer, Travis Homer. I don't I don't no, see he's, he's gone. Larry Bourne, Dominic yeah. Robinson. Yeah, that's another 10 million right there. Like, I'm just saying, I think we may keep Blassom game though. Uh, Kari, we, we don't, we know, haven't man. used the they haven't used no. fullbacks in Shane no, Waldron's he, offense. Waldron's all about tight ends, man. I mean, yep. that, yeah. so we might, we're, we're going to get, I, I think we're going to, I still think we're going to draft one more tight end. I really and do. if we think about it, we need more tight ends on this roster now with the rule change for in the kicking game and the kickoff oh, yeah. game. You're gonna need those big bodies, those guys that can run. 
and those yeah. got big bodies that can block. So I, I'm That's pretty sure that game, game, game is going to be a cap. He's going to be a casualty now, and for sure. I don't know. Hey, it's it's going to be a game time decision based off the schematics and how this thing set up. I don't know, Terry. I, yeah. I look. I, I can't see. call it. <laughs> so look, let me ask. I like this. him too, Terry. Yeah, <laughs> look, I like. But look, let me tell you something. I like him though. We, we look all the players that we like. You got to take the emotions out of it and look at the video. I do. Yeah. I do. Like, like, I do. Like, yeah. like again, when when you when you look at it from an emotional side, did you know hearing Paul say that his son got Justin's jersey in his room, friend on like when you hear stuff mm -hmm. like that, like that, like I don't care if you got sympathy as a man, if you got compassion. Like that's the hardest thing in the world. I have to make that yeah. call and say, "Look, man, yeah. look, we love you, but we got to go in a different direction. It's nothing yeah. personal." Because when you hear him and and Flus talk, and on look, Flus is more confident. He got the beard. He got the side. Yeah. Like, oh yeah, the shoe game is tight. Got his swag shoe back. game. Got his swag. <laughs> I don't know yeah. if he got the PR team that, uh, right. since we the season been over. He's speaking more confidently. He's speaking yep. more competently. I, I, I damn near don't even recognize old Fluke. I felt yeah. the same way. <laughs> it's, it, it's funny, man, because I remember I saw Fluce in 2022 down at the Combine. So it was his first Combine down there as the Chicago Bears coach. I, I saw him like in line, you know, grabbing like a like a seltzer water or something like that. He looked like a Whole Foods manager. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's, it's like it's like now 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 he, he looks a little bit more more the part for sure. You know, I was thinking about the backup quarterback thing. I feel like somebody like Tannehill is probably not coming to the Bears because I, I imagine he's looking he, – he's probably going to look at a place where it's like, you know what, I'll chill and then come in if if, a, if somebody gets injured. When he comes to Chicago, it's like he's going to be firmly behind Caleb. There ain't going to be no mm -hmm. competition. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? There's no quarterback competition. You're not going to play. You're here to mentor Caleb Williams. Mm -hmm. So I feel like another situation would, would probably – he'd be more interested in that. Um, I feel like of the free agents that that are out there right now, I feel like it's probably something more like a Blaine Gabbert or like uh, where, you know, like Blaine Gabbert was sitting behind Patrick Mahomes, right? He was he was in the Chiefs quarterback room. Mm -hmm. It's like if you got somebody who's seen like seen Patrick Mahomes up close in practice in the quarterback room, and could be like, hey man, like you know, I know you're interested in you know being one of the best, and people talk about you got that kind of skill set. It's like here, let let me tell you what like one of the two greatest quarterbacks to ever do it, how he does it. You know what Their I mean? Process, I feel, yeah. I feel, mm -hmm. I feel like something like that is probably uh, more likely, but you know, I feel like I, I, I really, I really want to get into this, uh, this number nine pick conversation. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, look, look, hey, hey, KT, you get ahead of yourself before we get to that number nine co uh, conversation. Let's go to the RG3 comments oh, where he said ooh. that he feels that Caleb should pull an Eli Manning. David, we're going to start with you. What <laughs> what is what is your comments on that? Well, David? my comments is on it where exact is basically what Cole said today on the the, the show of uh, Pat, uh, Pat McAfee. Pat McAfee, McAfee show. It mm -hmm. pissed him off. He said that yep. pisses me off. Cause I, I, cause we're, I, I don't worry about the past. I'm worried, you know, we're, we're building something, you know, listen, and I, and we all commented that day to RG three and I told it, it was all out of emotion. He was, mm -hmm. he was not thinking he was, he was not using his head. I actually, I, I have a lot of respect for RG three. I think he's really good. I just think he had a knee jerk reaction. He was mad. He was butt hurt. Maybe, I don't know. He was in his feelings. Um, but like Ryan Poles, I don't care with RG3, you know, and, and there's not going to be an Eli Manning move done here. I, I thought it was pretty mm – -hmm. because you know, what I found interesting is like a week and a half, week later, here comes Deion Sanders and his fan, and his fan talking about Hunter and his boy are going to – oh, we're going to dictate yeah. where we go. Yeah. We're going to yeah. – and my thing is like, you know what, Deion, you should worry about Travis Hunter finishing a season – and then you should worry Healthy. about your son winning game, winning more than four games. I mean, good, good, let's let's be real. I, and that's not that's not a diss on 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 Sanders. I'm just saying, I, you know, it's that's the old NFL. That that's the, I don't think that kind of stuff. That that whole we're going to demand a holdout and all that stuff. Come on now, no, that it, it, it's unnecessary. And I don't believe Caleb is going to do has any of that in his heart. Absolutely. Yeah. Do you see the way he was dabbing up Keenan? You see the yeah. way I was like, 
Come on, man. You're not going to say, no, nah, I don't want to go to California. I don't want to go to Chicago with DJ Moore and Keenan Allen and Gerald Everett mm-hmm. and, and Cole Komet and Swift. Come on. Right. He is licking his chops. And Swift. And Swift. <laughs> I, I had to throw that in there for Swift. All right? But uh, no, I, no, I'm not worried about RG3. I mean, listen, the Bears have all, are always going to get beaten up in the me- uh, with, uh, with the mainstream media. It, it doesn't mm-hmm. matter. It, it doesn't matter if we strike gold or if we swing and miss. It, it doesn't it, – somebody will always come out and say, yeah, but should they take Caleb when, like, for months and months, it's it's a no-brainer. It's a no-brainer. And then we take them, and they're like, they should have traded down. You watch. Uh-huh. They'll stay. They'll stay. <laughs> yep. Right? Yep. But we're yeah. in a position – we're in a position. We've got two top ten picks, the number one overall. The NFL can't say anything. Everybody and their mama knows we fleeced Carolina. Fleeced yep. them. It's one of yeah. the greatest, the greatest trades, fleeces of all time in our favor. There is no degradation or any, anything that anybody can talk about us. No one no asked if they won that trade. Yeah. And still yeah, not going back and re-examining and saying, boy, they made a mistake. No, nope. not at no, all. There's no mistake. Poles is looking like a genius. Now, if he gets it, you know, if, if Caleb turns out to be what we all believe he can be, I mean, you're talking historic. You're talking They'll go back to the they'll go back to the Texans that play, that Hail Mary play that gave mm-hmm. us the first pick. Yes. Yep. I mean, it'll, all, it'll, it'll, it'll be story time. <laughs> it'll be story time. So no, I'm not worried about RG3. I'm not worried. I'm not worried about the media. Um, I trust polls. Like I said, when Will and I met him at the shrine at the shrine game. Nothing but nothing but you know accolades to him. Told him he was the architect, and in, in polls I trust. In polls I trust. Samo, what you think? Go, give me some comments on what you think about the takes of RG three. Man, I like RG three, man, but I'm gonna have to agree with polls, man. It pissed me off a little bit too, man, because uh, I think uh, RG three got a little bit in his own personal feelings from his previous situation where he felt like he was done wrong, and he kind of felt I think he. Uh, he saw himself and Justin a little bit when he saw that situation like happening to Justin and it kind of felt like, Hey, now Justin's not going to get the opportunity that I, that he deserves. Just like I didn't get the opportunity I deserved or something like that, man. It's sort of similar. I think he just got in his feelings a little bit, man. I think it was a knee jerk reaction from him to even post something like that uh, without, you know, really understanding the situation and like Brian Paul said, and this was a financial decision that they made, man. I think that uh, you have to understand that like quarterbacks are making $50 million a year right now. You got the opportunity to take a younger guy and get, extend the contract uh, for what, four or five years before you have to, you know, divvy out that $50 million a year, which will probably be $75 million a year by the time, Caleb gets his contract with something crazy, right? But, uh, yeah, I, I don't think that that was cool of RG3 to do, you know, just to uh, a young brother GM, too, man, to even put him in that situation because the past and the present are completely different. Like Paul said, man, he came here to change the past and, you know, to make things better, to change the culture, and this does look different. I keep saying that this looks completely different than anything we've ever seen as far as the coaching staff, as far as the – general manager actually building the team from the from the ground up and laying a nice foundation right now and putting a, a rookie quarterback in the best situation any rookie quarterback has ever stepped into ever ever so why tell a a, a quarterback who's trying to come out and, and hit the ground running not to step into what's looking like a, it's going to be a great situation for him like that was just like i said it had to be a knee-jerk reaction, man, and it, it was just him and his own personal feelings, man, and it's sad to say. And as far as Deion Sanders goes, man, uh, Deion's my guy, uh, of course, but, man, I don't know how to feel about that. I'm just – but I really do feel like we're going to see a lot more of that coming with NIL deals. NIL, and, 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 NIL is dictating yeah, that. It's going to dictate it, man, because these guys are coming out. They're, they're, they've already made money, and, you know, they can go back into – the draft if they want to and all and uh, continue to make money or they can come out and play for it for your team. And then they can demand where they want to go. I think Caleb could have put himself in that situation, but it's not looking like he's going to do that, man. And everyone kept saying like, Oh, he wants this. He wants that. 
And by everything that Pose is saying, man, the dude is a good dude, man. He's a, yeah. uh, you know, he's a great kid, man. He's taking care of his teammates. That's all I kept hearing at the combine and everything where they talk about it. Like he takes care of his teammates. He takes care of his teammates. I took that as, but well, he taking care of his teammates, like financially, like if they need something or if they need something, he going to look out for them. Like, I know I'm the one making all the money, but hey. This is what this is about us, you know. I'm, and that's what Paul says is happening. He takes his linemen out to dinner, not just the starters. He takes all of them out to dinner. He's buying them Christmas presents and stuff like that. Man, as a as a college kid, you know, you want to see him uh, show some maturity with the money. And I think that that's what he's doing. And man, by all means, I think it's a great situation for him to land in too, man. And I think RG three was just wrong. Man, KT, talk. KT, you rubbing your head, baby. Come on. What you think about them comments that RG3 and we're going to throw Deion Sanders in there too since David opened that Pandora's box? Well, he did. I I, I'm, I'm going to start with, with Deion. I mean, look, he can kind of say whatever he wants to say, but I mean, in, in reality, like, yeah, you can you can rock with the NIL stuff. Uh, you know, these guys have made money. They were buying Deion a house, right? Yeah. You know, his kids bought him a house and all that stuff. That, that's cool. But I think ultimately, you know, you don't want to, you don't want to play around with the kid's future. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And I don't know that Shadur, I mean, I think that he, he's, you know, a solid player he might, might, you know, get even better this year. Travis Hunter, you know, might be, I mean, in terms of just pure talent, you might even be the best player that, that might be coming into this, this draft. I mean, he, mm -hmm. what he can do at, at both receiver and corner is kind of wild, but, you know, I, I think like especially for somebody like Shadur, it's like, OK, you want to pull an Eli Manning like you're not even necessarily the top prospect in this draft. So have fun with that. Sure. I think I think that in the end, you know, Dion can say what he wants to say, but I think that he'll be realistic when it comes down to it. And, you know, hopefully everything works out for, for those two right now. It strikes me as bluster. We'll see. We'll see what happens down the line. Um, as far as RG3, like, yeah, I think. You know, I'll just keep it short. You know, a lot like a lot like what you were saying. I think that a lot of it is in in a bunch of other quarterback analysts thought the same thing. Like looking at Justin Fields' situation and seeing that it wasn't a great situation, especially for those first two years. And then it's like, oh yeah, the one year that they kind of built above ground with him. I mean, even in the in the beginning of the year, they were like non-competitive on defense for for mm -hmm. a lot of it. And it's like, oh yeah, so now this one year that he finally had something to work with. It's like he get you know he you know shows improvement and now you're gonna get rid of him and now you've got people I I feel like there are a lot of people that went a little bit too far in the direction of they gave him a fair shot and you know it, it's it's like you know he he just he just sucked you know and that's kind of what it is and I think that that's a little bit disingenuous I don't know that you could call much about those first two years particularly fair. Um, this third year, obviously you put a little bit more on, okay, Justin, we needed you to show a little bit more because timing is what it is and he got better, but was it, you know, now he's a top 10 quarterback. It wasn't. And the reality of the situation is it's business and it's cruel. You know, I think, I think that's, that's really what it is. It is cold, mm -hmm. hard business and it's going to be, it's going to be sad, you know, not having him be the quarterback of the Chicago bears. I, I think that he's still got more to his game. I think he's going to get better. I want to see him have that opportunity to prove that to everybody. Cause there's a lot of people I think talking kind of crazy about him. Um, I mean, obviously he has his flaws, but I mean, I think that, you know, again, he's, he's, he's a good football player. Um, at the same time, when it comes to RG three and, and him kind of saying that, I just feel like it's illogical completely illogical because the Chicago bears, I mean, even just look back to what we were just talking about earlier, the Chicago bears that made Justin Fields life hard coming into the league or the, the team that, you know, struggled with Mitchell Trubisky and didn't take advantage of Jay Cutler's prime and blah, 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 whatever. As far as you can go back, haven't had a great quarterback since Sid Luckman, whatever, mm -hmm. whatever. Right. That's not the same Chicago Bears we're talking about anymore. Ryan Poles has gone out of his way to make it a better situation. There's no way that Caleb Williams or any of these other rookie quarterbacks 
could look at Chicago versus any of the other teams they could go to in the top mm-hmm. five or whatever team you know, might want to trade up for them and look at those teams and think, oh, yeah, that's better for me than the Chicago Bears. No, man, the Chicago Bears have put a whole bunch of professionals out there on the field to help you get better from day one. He got you an established – Poles got you an established offensive coordinator in Shane Waldron, a guy that has shown that he can run competent offense, okay? This, this – and this is – the best situation that, you know, arguably like a number one overall pick at quarterback has come into. So there's no way that, that anyone in their right mind is going to be looking at the situation and saying, Oh yeah, I'm going to totally force my way out of this. No, Mm -hmm. no. At this point, the foundation is too good. It doesn't make no damn sense. So I didn't really pay it any mind because again, like Ryan Poles has been saying, we are here to break the cycle. And I think he's been showing that he is every bit about that. Terry, come on, Terry. Close us out with that one, baby. Let's go. <laughs> man, quite honestly, I canceled my tea time with RG3 for uh, this week when he said that, man. I told him oh. I'm done with him, man. You know, oh. no, no, <laughs> no, honestly, though, honestly, though, um, um, I, I heard what RG3 said and I saw him try to clean it up a little bit today when he, when he, uh, when he talked about it a little bit. Um, and he was kind of putting himself in the situation with the watch because watching the commanders where they were the Redskins at the time, they they drafted him and Kirk Cousins. Yeah. Yep. You know oh. what I mean? And, and, and Kirk and Kirk Cousins yep. is still playing in the league. Come on. And got a lucrative contract. Got, man, look, you know? every one of them he inside. <laughs> yeah. Third time. <laughs> yeah. And so I, I love I love RG3. Like I said, I've, I've been knowing him. I met him a few times, been knowing him for a while, but I was just a little disappointed with with that comment because, like you said, you have none of those. Ryan Poles didn't draft Justin Fields. Mm-hmm. Same Shane Waldron did not draft Justin Fields. So they want their guy, you know. And and so this is all the the draft. This this draft is all going to be on on Ryan Poles and Saint Shane Waldron. They're going to be on the same page. So they want they wanted their guy. Not to say Justin Fields is not a good player, but they wanted their guy, and this is who they're they're going to die and fall on the sword with this guy because that's who they selected. And with Dion, obviously, you know that's my that's my guy, but you know it's, it was it, that was a little disappointing too because it's like it's it's kind of like tainting the draft, you know what I mean? Like all right, I I, I, don't, I don't, I'm gonna take my ball and go home because I don't like who I'm getting drafted by. Yep. You know what I mean? You got some people who fight daily to get drafted, and they don't care where they get drafted at. They want to go out there and have an opportunity to prove themselves. So let your son and let and, and let Travis Hunter go out and prove themselves, and 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 hopefully the hopefully the team wants to be a better. I know there's some teams that that are professional tankers. We already know that, right? Mm-hmm. But the thing about it is this. You put a lot of these young men in a situation where they want to be drafted in the NFL, and for you to say, oh, "I don't want to go there," I was, I, 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 I'm gonna pick where I want them to go at. I understand you got their best interests at heart, but let them make those decisions. Mm-hmm. You live and you learn. Yeah, it's a business at the end of the day, and you know, the more and more I listen to what RG three said, you know, his biggest thing is extend polls, extend Eberflu, so that- right. Taylor would not be in a lame duck situation similar to Justin Field, similar to Mitchell Trubisky, because John Fox was the coach when Trubisky yep. was selected. And Nagy was the coach for And Nagy was the coach when Fields was selected. So mm-hmm. from that perspective, giving them continuity, even though, again, we know it's a business and you're expected to win now, it, it's really a microwave league. You used to have two to three years to a lot of these guys to come in and develop. Yeah. Yeah. Now, now it, like like day one, we if we're not winning, we got to see some progress towards winning. And going yes. from three wins to seven wins, which the seven wins should have been ten wins. Right. Now I'm looking at it. Hey guys, realistically, do y'all realize drafting Caleb on paper gives us the best quarterback in the NFC North Division? I know Jordan Love had a good year last year, but now the jury's still out. Up uh, the jury's still out. <laughs> right. in, ter- in terms of upside, see, see here, here's the thing. I don't I and I've written about this too. I don't want to start this this way where we're talking about, oh yeah, Caleb's gonna come right in and do this, this, and that. It's like 
still got to give it some time. But I oh, agree oh, with oh, you oh. in this that Caleb Williams with the kind of stuff that he can do. Oh yeah, like, it could be dangerous. Yeah, I'm just saying, I'm just gonna say like this: the rest of the the rest of our division, they they may like be downplaying it, but I, I promise you, Lion, Packer, and Viking fans mm. are like. They're they're they they, they don't want to they they're like God they, they know what's up. I yeah, promise yeah. you they know what's up. Now it's yeah. gonna be real interesting to see, for example, what does Minnesota do? Because they have made it very clear moving up. That, yeah, well, moving yeah. Up. But yeah. but I think I think they made it very clear they want a quarterback. Who do mm -hmm. they get though? Because there's all this smoke about oh, everybody loves JJ McCarthy now. It's like I think that's smoke. I think Drake yeah. is there. I think I they think want Drake, Drake May. I think they want yeah. Drake May. I don't I believe the J.J. Drake. McCarthy. Yeah. I don't believe the J.J. McCarthy rumors to Minnesota at all. They want Drake, and I think they're going to go hard at – I think they're going to go hard at New England's pick. Yeah. Uh, 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 I, 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 that's what I, I believe. And I at, believe worst, at, at worst, I think they probably make that trade with the Cardinals if New England won't give it up. Because I think the reality for New England is like, yeah, it sounds fun. Like, oh, let me go ahead and uh, and trade down. They have no damn quarterback on their roster. Like, I think it's one, two, three, though, KT. I think it's Caleb, Jaden, and, Dr and Drake. And Drake, one, two, three. Yeah, I think and they then, got back then, to back to back. So I, like, feel, I feel like I can't. I feel like I can't bring myself to think that Drake May's not going to be the number two pick. I'm sorry. Like I just number really over over Jaden Daniel. Yeah, I think, I think it's the Jaden Daniels factor. I mean, man, you got to remember, man, they got a basketball uh, GM as their GM. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that, I, exactly. I, I they want the razzle dazzle. They yeah. they're looking for the razzle dazzle. <laughs> Magic, Magic Johnson. Drake May does Johnson the razzle dazzle. Stop. You seen this man, right? Yeah, yeah, he does. He does. But I mean, you, I mean, you I, said I, Drake I, May. But yeah. not as much as uh, no, Jaden Daniels. I'm, I'm, I'm an ACC guy. Uh, and, and Will will tell you this. I've been covering ACC for a long time. I am not sold on May. I am not. No, I hear that I'm a lot either. from ACC fans. I'm not I am not sold at, on them. Yeah. I've been, I covered the ACC everything. I even went to the ACC uh, ceremony, the opening ceremony. I'm just not sold on Drake May. Quite honestly, I'm not. I mean, I, I, I'm not, not saying he's not good. But I, I, I'm not sold at all. Oh, Drake, man, he's, he's one of those scared, guys bro. that you can't start yeah, he's, from day he's, one. He's got to sit not, and learn. Yeah, he, he, but, yes. yeah. But, but here's he the thing, though. David, you're right, but here's the thing. That's why Minnesota can't draft because you got to look at this. What 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 is the biggest concern that Justin Jefferson has right now that, that, that says whether he's going to sign and stay with Minnesota? He's no quarterback. Quarterback. So, so mm -hmm. right now, realistically – there's only one or two guys for Justin Jefferson that I see Minnesota targeting that would make Justin Jefferson happen, and that's either Caleb Williams or Jaden Daniels. Other than who, those two, who, who's, who's than, an LSU guy too? Right, he's an LSU mm -hmm. guy too. Mm -hmm. so, <laughs> yeah. so in yep. saying that, guys, because I know KT been beating beat, beating the uh, table to talk about what we're gonna do with this number nine pick. Look, I'm gonna be, <laughs> look, I'm gonna be honest, guys, and and, and we're gonna go around the horn. But until Keenan Allen signs an extension, we got him for just this year only. We got DJ Moore after this year for one more year only. So there's yeah. necessarily no certainty that he's going to sign an extension. I think he will, but like he said, yeah. it, business is business. So that's why I'm leaning towards number nine being a wide receiver. Because 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 we could go from two studs to realistically – Z, well, back to DJ Moore, if Keenan Allen says, you know what, not only am I not going to extend, but I might just retire because he's going in year 12. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. so we again, we got to look at this from a logical, rational perspective. Granted, I want to edge. My, my first priority number nine would be an edge because you already know. Uh, Jared Burst, that's mm -hmm. my guy. <laughs> and, and, yep. and, and honestly, I feel we could probably trade down with nine Get an ex or use next year's pick from Carolina, the gift that keeps on giving, and come back into the first and 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 and, and really posture ourselves to, to pick up a JPJ late first and pick up because see Keon Coleman's four six one. I think that's gonna bump him into the second round. And 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 we'll have a shot. So 
in so many ways. And, and I'm excited and I'm curious to see how Ryan Poles plays this thing because as of right now, guys, we got three picks. I'm not counting number one pick because that's already gone. Yeah. Okay. We got three. If yeah. you think we're going to end up in this draft with three picks, I got some land on Pluto for sale. <laughs> <laughs> right. And, and, right. And guys, this draft is so deep. You got a Malachi Corley. I think he's a sleeper that we could put in that old slot. Yep. You got yep. Xavier Leggett. He, That's he, what I was just about to say. Well, hey, look, Xavier so, look, Leggett look, is a dog, man. He's a dog. He that can return punts. He can return. And look, with the new kickoff rule, Baylor's Jones to be. become relevant. We get man, look, is they yep. look at somebody that's a thoroughbred? Come on, man, stop mm -hmm. playing. We're still yeah. holding out hope for Baylor's Jones, and he's about to go on Social Security next year. We talk about Baylor's Jones. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know. Hey, I don't know, I don't know about Baylor's Jones. Hey, hey, hey Baylor's value just went up, man. Hopefully, come on. Come on. <laughs> come on. Baylor's, come on. Here, what did this do? What did the Steelers do as soon as soon as they released that new uh, special team rule? What what what, what, what who did Pittsburgh sign? Who did they say? Uh, they go from the uh, that Cordell they used to play Hodgson. for the Bears and and, and the Falcons. Cordell, uh, they got Cordell. Oh yeah. man, we just talked about it last week when I Come when I was talking about this rule. On, yeah, now. man, I'm, I'm telling you, that's gonna that, that's gonna be an impact play. Now the kickoff return is gonna be an impact play, man. It's gonna be a lot of opportunities for uh, special teams coordinators to be creative and uh, oh, yeah. and their returns and man just lateraling and man because the guys are so close together, man, and it's you get that running start as a as a uh, returner. Oh man, it's going to be nice to see the return game come back. Man, I think that there's going to be some dynamic guys that are going to be some good returners. I see a guy like uh, what's the running back from Louisiana uh, that just ran like a four two something. I see that guy's going to be valuable. He's going to go. His draft stock yeah. just went up. The yeah, running back sure. from uh, from Louisville. Oh, Isaac, Isaac Guerrero. Guerrero. Isaac Guerrero. Yeah, that, yeah he was down. He was down at Shrine. Hey, his hey, stock yeah. just shot up just now, man. When this when this rule changed, because uh, now he's a, a impact returner, man. That's a, that's more opportunity for more touches for him. Like return, they're gonna actually be returns in the NFL this year, man. Yeah. That play actually means something. So, Sam, oh, you know what? So I, I covered the XFL last year, right? And mm -hmm. so this is where they kind of adopted that um that whole kickoff return from. And when I first saw the with the XFL, I was like, man, this this is this is crazy. But then I thought about it, I was like, man, this is not bad at all. And I'm gonna be honest mm -hmm. with you. Um, uh, um Will talked about it before, but a person like Xavier Leggett, he is let, me, be let, me, let me tell you something. Now he's not going in the first round, he's not, and he he may go late second round, but I'm gonna tell you right now, Chicago is drafting two wide receivers in this draft. Mm -hmm. I can guarantee you that. And then this is this is going to be the draft, which is not really the draft, but this is going to be the draft where undrafted free agents make okay. a name for themselves because it's yep. so we deep. We always find good ones too. Always oh, find some really good ones. Mm -hmm. Always oh, really good at yeah. finding those undrafted free agents that are yeah. contributors. Yeah. Look at yeah. Jack Sanborn. And Chicago is going to be attractive Sanborn. to those undrafted yeah. free agents. Yes. That's because we don't have a lot of draft picks, yeah. so you don't have a lot of opportunities to see the field. Yeah, yeah. exactly. I, I think exactly. that's that's really interesting because I think about 2018. I know it's different regime and everything, right? But but 20. 2018 and like that 2019 season when the bears got good and then it was like all of a sudden they were raking in undrafted free agents guys mm -hmm. that were that were able to contribute like one of the guys i was thinking about actually was alex bars i mean obviously he didn't stick around yeah. for very long but he was somebody people got excited Notre about because they're just mm -hmm. like hey man look at this Notre like you know, this, this is a guy who can actually like maybe play you know and and i and i think that when you I think in this case, if you build it, they will come. And I think that Ryan Poles has built a really strong situation with which to happen. Now, I had to say, I like this idea of drafting more than one receiver. I feel like it's such a deep draft. And, and I think the other point here, too, is, you know, not even just the, the idea that, uh, you know, Keenan Allen might retire, but injury, right? You got to have some injury insurance here because then – I mean, I, I think that infrastructure wise, you're better off this year on paper. If you are down to, you know, DJ Moore in your wide receiver room in terms of your elite options, because you do have Cole Komet still around. You do have a, a better, I, I think, 
improved running game on paper with DeAndre Swift. And you also have another tight end that can actually catch the football. You know, it's kind of nice. Mm-hmm. Um, so you, you have that, but I, I think that wide receiver two and three really need to get figured out this year because I mean, I like Tyler Scott, but I feel like he's a wide receiver four. Mm-hmm. I, I feel like that that's probably his value. And he's a guy that you need to be looking at as a kick return guy as well, because yeah. that dude can absolutely he can slide, fly. you yeah. know? I so so, so I, I, I'm not against he's seeing what Tyler player. Scott can do and if he can keep improving, I'm not against that at all. But I think that again, if you're, if you're really serious about, let's see what we can do right now, then I feel like the idea of getting a wide receiver, whether it's like if Rome falls to you at nine, I don't care. Just do that. Take them. Just well, do I it. I think that's the only scenario, yeah, though, KT. I think that's uh, they. I think it depends. Nine depends on two players, in my opinion, Rome awesome. and Joe Alt. Mm-hmm. I think mm-hmm. if it, if one of those two guys fall to nine, Paul has no choice. But if the both of them are gone, I see nine becoming a landing spot for somebody like Denver or or in the 15 to 16 area to move up to nine to get like a J.J. McCarthy, who I think will be on the board. And and that's where I think we – feel like he's getting talked up too much. I don't I think it's going to happen. I mean, KT, he's going to go in the first round. He's going to go yeah. in the first round. So, I mean, I think I think nine is real interesting, uh, and I think it will be a, 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 a pullback. I think we trade out unless those two players are on the board. And I think a guy, guy we've talked about Swift and, and Will and I have talked about this in other mock drafts about a guy like Brian Thomas Jr. from LSU. If it, you know, he's a guy that will probably be around the 16, the 16 to 20 area, right? Because listen, after the quarterbacks go, there's going to be a mad dash. I mean, wide receivers are going to go boom, boom, boom. I don't, I, I'm holding out hope for Rome to fall to nine. I don't know, man. I think after I, I, Marvin goes, I think Rome, I think the Giants, I think the Giants are going to snap. Or I know, I don't know who's going to throw them the ball in New York. Yeah. Drew Locke. Yeah. I have Drew Locke. But uh, it, it, to the, me, that's the, the Giants need linemen. Play. They need the linemen. Exactly. They need they need linemen. The Giants, the Giants need everything. Right. Hey, let's go around the horn. Hey, David, give us one quick take because we get ready to close out. Give us one quick take. Of uh, where you see the remainder of this um, off season going? Go. I mean, listen. We got less than four weeks to go to the draft. Thank God. Um, I, I'm listen. I'm putting on. Uh, I'm doing. I'm watching all kinds of film. Watching all kinds of interviews. Uh, you know, I'm reading up on on other teams that that are, that are positioning themselves to see what we what polls can do. Uh, I'm as excited uh, as I've ever been. But going into any season, I think the future is bright. Uh, and like I said, I'm waiting for that one more. There's one more move in it. I'm telling you, there's something chambered. Something's going to happen. And, uh, and uh, you know, I'm here for it. So, you know, go Bears. KT, let's go, KT. I think the Chicago Bears are going to find a way to – obviously, we have a pretty good idea of what number one is going to be. But I feel like the Bears can get lucky here and grab and stay at nine and do it. And I think that even if they can't get another pick, I think that they're going to end up with like Roma Dunze at nine. And it's going to be crazy. And people are going to be talking about how the bears heisted this draft. Now (laughs) I I do, I do think that somebody weirdly enough um, that we, we, we talked about Khalil Herbert potentially being trade bait. I feel like there's a non zero chance that especially if somebody like Joe Alt was involved, that we could see Braxton Jones get a little bit of that too. That he could could potentially be someone on the block. Because look, I think, again, you got a chance to be great. Sometimes you can't, you can't wait. You know, some and, and I mean, Braxton Jones is a good player, and they're going to hey, be. You just stole what I was. You stole my take, KT. I, 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 I'm gonna cut you off. Second round pick for. Let's go, Terry. You know what? Um, I, I you're right. Uh, what Brian mentioned before. Uh, I, I don't think the Bears are done. I think we're probably going to sign another veteran, a defensive end. You know, there's there's a couple of little guys that are still out there that can that can make something you know happen for the Bears. But I, I believe that the Bears are definitely trading that knife pick. Uh, that's definitely going. We won't trade out to, like, number 25 or anything like that. But we'll trade 
a few spots to get more picks because this we already talked about it before this draft is deep and we're trying to get everything that we can but believe it or not i think we got like 30 something million dollars left to spend 40 give or take mm -hmm. hey that's a lot of money to be throwing these one and two year deals at some folks you know here and there to entice Tice people. So wouldn't be surprised if Chicago Bears make another deal, but we definitely need to get a backup quarterback. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I like the backup quarterback idea, man. Somebody who's uh, done it all and seen it all and like a, a tenant hill. Hopefully that hat shakes out. Uh, man, that ninth pick, that ninth pick is key to me. Uh, I think that we have to trade out of it unless they're, they're Roma Dunze is there or Malik Neighbors is there. Uh, I definitely don't think Marvin Harrison Jr. will be there. If if he is, then God is a uh, Chicago Bears fan for sure. Uh, hey, but if, if if one of those guys are there, then we keep it. If it's not, then we trade it out, man. And and I'm not opposed to uh, drafting the top defensive edge at that point in time if we don't trade for one because I think this draft is deep at wide receiver, man. Uh, I'm looking at guys, man, right now. I just identified a guy that's – smoking that's completely off the radar i haven't heard anybody talking about in a uh jaylen coker a dude from uh Holy Holy Cross. Holy Cross. Yes, sir. that dude is a route runner man yeah. that dude is a better dude to go up and get it man yeah. that's and he's i've watched interviews from a man great kid man and personality man i really like that kid a lot i'm hoping that he falls maybe into free a undrafted free agent but i doubt it but that's another guy we can get later like i said the wide receivers are extremely deep the edge rushes not so much so i'm kind of leaning that way a little bit even though i'm going back and forth with myself but either way i think the bears do make one more big move in free agency um or via trade maybe we trade this pick back man and pick up a player Man, give up some draft capital, man. But something big is gonna happen, man. To just you know put put the icing on this cake for the end of the season or the end of the off season, right before the draft. Hey, man, I'm bearing down and looking forward to it all, man. Great show, fellas. Great show. Yes, I'm gonna close out. Hey, T stole my thought. I was looking at one player that we could trade other than Herbert. I said, you know what? What if we trade Braxton Jones, even though he's up and coming, and select yeah. to go all down at nine if we don't go edge. Because, like you say, the wide receiver draft is so deep. So deep. It's so deep. And I know, and I'm thinking, what if we get an edge via trade? Because we yep. still got Paul Reddick, even though the Eagles are asking for a second. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going yep. back and forth with different scenarios that we could particularly um, delve off into to kind of like, like y'all are saying, put the final icing on the cake. So I, like everyone is saying, I anticipate one more big move, maybe two, uh, mm -hmm. a mid tier signing in free agency. And this is going to cap. The, the, the rest of the offseason, going into the Hall of Fame game, guys, I know we all going to be there because I know, guess what, we discussed it. So, look, <laughs> David, thanks. KT, thanks. Terry, thanks. Samuel, as always, thanks. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you all Get for tuning in to another episode of Monsters of the Gridiron. We love you. We adore you. And guess what? As we all say together simultaneously, bam, 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 b